Okay, now here I am again for the second part. I'm now using the big TV. Ang hirap kasi mag-edit ng video. Hindi nakalagay ko pa yung PowerPoint sinasama ko pa sa video. I'll just shoot it all together in one using the big TV and I think it's a lot more easier. Mas mabilis pa ako matatapos because it's already a Friday ng madaling araw. It's 12 a.m. I'm still at the office. I'm not done with the presentation. And it's already Saturday in the Philippines. So... In the first part of the presentation, I talked about this introduction, selling. We're talking more about proposals, and we're talking about uh, uh, contracts and and uh, pricing. Now, in the second part, we're going to talk more about the operation side. So. Going straight into it, SEO business operations, when you do have a contract, you do have a proposal, you do agree on something, you do agree on the price, fulfill what you promised, fulfill what you said in the contract. Again, it sounds like common sense. But if you once you get a client that is not happy, discontented, what are you losing? You're losing revenue. Bakit hindi mo na? Uh, hindi mo na client again in the future. You're using, you're losing network connections. Bakit? Because they could refer more clients, and when they can't refer any clients, wala na. You lose a client. Uh, you get bad testimonials. If this is the type of client na magsasalita siya in public, popost siya sa blogs, lalagay ka niya sa ripoff report, sasalita siya ng pangit, popost niya sa Facebook, walang kwenta ang, ang SEO na to, ayoko mag-SEO sa kanya, linoko ko, ganyan, ganyan. Then it's bad. It's bad publicity for you. You might get even less customers. But often, discontentment is a product of misunderstanding. Hindi lang kayo nagkaintindihan. That's why it is important with everything that I've mentioned earlier earlier in the first presentation, goals and KPIs, have a tight contract, have a project plan, and set proper expectations with all of these. Pag pareho expectation nyo, walang misunderstanding. Walang misunderstanding, hindi siya makukontento. Kung hindi siya nag agree sa mga sinet mo, then you won't even get into the deal in the first place. So, wala magiging problema. Ang problema lang is if you don't meet what you promise, problema talaga yun. Okay, if they don't, people may get things incorrectly. So it's important to always be in constant communication with your client. Make sure you're always on the same page. So uh, when you do have a project, it clearly states, kailan nagsisimula, kailan natatapos. Kasi kung wala kang project plan, isipin na, ah, kailan tapos. Again, expectations, when does a project end, what are your goals? You, you state that in your project plan para alam ng kliente kailan talaga matatapos. Clearly show the steps along the way. If you show each and every step within your Gantt chart, they know what to expect day after day, month after month, week after week. Uh, hindi sila yung parang naghihintay, oh, ano nang next, ano nang next. Eh, hindi ka rin natataranta kada, kada email mo, ano nang ginagawa mo, ah, oh, mag invento ka, mag-iisip ka, ano nang gagawin kong next. Have that plan laid out. It's already in your proposal. It's already in your contract. Now you're just laying out the plan. Now, dynamically adjust roadblocks that come along your critical path. So, sometimes there might be some steps na required ang approval ng client. Let's say before you use any type of keyword, the marketing department of their company would approve it, or the owner of the company wants to approve it, or any type of step usually may approval. On your side, uh, kunwari yung isang gagawa ng trabaho, nag absent yung tao. Busy lahat ng tauhan mo, walang ibang gagawa, busy ka rin sa isang client, and there's a delay. Any type of delay, you should adjust it in your project plan, and the Gantt chart or whatever chart you're using, the dates would all adjust. So dynamically adjust blocks are on your critical path. The critical path is the shortest path you could have of task with prerequisite task. Kasi pag prerequisite silang lahat, one should be done before the other. If along that critical path, may isang na-delay, urong silang lahat. Tasks that are not along your critical path, meaning walang prerequisite, it does not affect your, your timeline. Okay? Uh, uh, plan for single point of failure. Ano yung single point of failure? Um, always think of something that is dependent on one thing. And what is your backup plan? So let's say a single point of failure is you heavily rely on, on uh, a single person that does all your link building. Kasi lahat kayo hindi marunong, isang tao lang marunong link building. Biglang nagkasakit siya. Pop, anong backup plan mo? Delayed na yung project. Let's say you're relying on a tool, a reporting tool, a ranking tool that runs all the reports and whatever. 
biglang nakorap, hindi gumana. Sira yung buong report. Wala kang ibang computer, wala kang backup plan. So, always look if there's single points of failure and it's nice to have redundancy. Always have a backup plan, always have a redundancy. Always think of that situation because you never know when that comes along. Okay? Use project management tools. Marami ito. And probably we could take that offline. I could discuss it in the forum. But, you know, there's MS Project, there's Basecamp, there's and all these other tools. Uh, I don't even know if I have a slide on that. I think I do. Oh, I do. Microsoft Project. Okay. Uh, Open Project, which is free. Uh, Microsoft Project comes normally with MS Office if you do the option to install it. Kadonk Live, Live Project uh, works with Microsoft Project. It turns Microsoft Project uh, into a web-based type of file and you could do some uh, collaboration between uh, people. Uh, Basecamp uh, is web-based. It's by 37 Signals and it's not free. And Avu is basically open source and it is like a Basecamp clone. So if you don't want to pay, pay for Basecamp and you know how to install these type of files, you might want to check that. Task Freak, there's a free and also a paid. It's nice task management type of tool. Uh, there are several project management tools that are included within Fantastico. You normally see this in cPanel. Uh, and cPanel is basically installed in many hosting uh, servers out there. You know, Bluehost, HostGator, and all those other ones have cPanel. They have Fantastico, and you will find these in there. Dot .project or, uh, and page project, which are project management tools. Okay? You have to meet your goals. And if you want to meet your goals, you have to prove success. To prove success, you have to meet your KPIs. Now, if you want to meet your KPIs, you need several tools. What are your tools, you know? For ranking, what do you measure? You know, there's several tools that run on your desktop. SEO Power Suite, Web CEO, Web Position, Internet Business Promoter, Market Samurai, um, and there's software as service, which are web-based. You know, there's Raven Tools, there's Authority Labs. One thing that I didn't mention here is uh, Rank Checker of SEO Book. Um, it's a Firefox plugin, you could use that also. So this is mainly for ranking. If your goal is to track ranking and to show ranking improvements, you should be able to show that over time. Checking your ranking over time. Use a tool and so you could prove that you met your goals. If you met your goals, you prove to, proven to the client that I was successful. If you're successful, then they might want to sign up with you again. Analytics. Uh, how could you prove increases in traffic, increases in branding, increases in traffic to your blog, increases of uh, incoming traffic from social media? You know, there's Google Analytics, there's Pewik, which is open source, there's Omniture, which is more, you know, Adobe, which is uh, enterprise level, uh, as well as Web Trends and Core Metrics. All of these are paid, so they're more expensive. If you're a freelancer or what, you could probably just rely on these two. Uh, if it's a large client, they might have these already installed. You just have to learn how to read the numbers there. Uh, if part of your goals is to show how effective your link building campaign is and you want to show that the increases of backlinks over time, there's several tools. There's AHREF, SEO Mods is Open Site Explorer, and one of our sponsors to the event, Majestic SEO, Palakpakan. Yay! Thank you, Majestic, for being one of the sponsors of the event. Now, another tool that you could use is Link Research Tools. Link Research Tools, uh, you could use API keys of all of these, put it in here, and suddenly you get the data of all of them all rolled into one. Very powerful. Okay, now business intelligence is more for the correlation of all these numbers. Let's say business intelligence tools is uh, if you could get data that exports in whatever format or you could use APIs. API tools or uh, export in CSV, MySQL, Excel, whatever, put them all in here and you say what are the common fields uh, that you want to compare then you could come up with your correlation analysis in all of these. Uh, it sounds easier than said than done because learning these, there's quite a learning curve in learning how to use these. But basically, let's say you want to see the effect of the 10 backlinks that you got this month using a specific anchor text and seeing what effects in ranking did it do within the whole month and what was the corresponding changes in analytics. Whatever graph you want to come up with, some line graph, bar graph, correlations, scatter plot, whatever, 
then you're going to rely on these type of tools to show that type of correlation. Okay, these are just some examples. There's tons of business uh, intelligence tools out there. Now, sometimes you could search for data mining tools. It's kind of similar. Now, of course, when you want to present these to the clients, you could present it in any way. Commonly, we would use Excel or PowerPoint, just showing to the client, hey, this is uh, our report. You could show it live in a meeting or you could print it out or whatever format you want it to be. Okay, so what if you want to show some correlations from a tool itself, not relying on business intelligence? There's several tools out there. There's Bright Edge, SEO Clarity, Optify, HubSpot, and all of these are more expensive than the rest. Usually, if you have a smaller client and you also have a running your own freelance business, maybe these, this is not the best tool to use. But if you have a large client and you are a freelance person and the client is willing to spend it on themselves and they're currently using it, then why not use it too? Also gain some experience in using these tools. Okay. Uh, I know Alfredo Palconit, if he's in the audience, he has some experience with Bright Edge because I notice on the Bright Edge website they're highlighting branders in there that they're using Bright Edge, so it's nice to know that. Okay. Now, the interest of your client, the best interest of your client is your interest also. Okay? SEO is a part of marketing. So, normally, you know, if you do SEO for a company, and you are hired to do some part of their marketing. And in any type of marketing, the end goal is to generate more revenue. Kaya ka nagma-marketing para dumami ang bibili sa'yo. Dadami ang bibili sa'yo, lalaki ang kita mo. Okay? Now, so it's part of your goal to make them successful. Sometimes you always think, uh, my goal is just to get number one for this specific keyword. It's not really like that, okay? Uh, once you help your client within their own end goal, what's going to happen is it makes them happy. And once they are happy, they become more loyal. They tend to stay with you. So always think of that. Always think of how could I help the client earn more money. If a SEO client does not make money after doing a lot of SEO, then they will not do it again. In fact, they should not. Bakit? Kasi sayang ang pera nila. So, uh, sometimes if you're thinking of it, uh, paano ko ba gagawin to? But, learn to do more outside of SEO. Bakit? Because sometimes when you learn SEO and you start ranking for a keyword, you may never know how effective that keyword is, how much money that keyword is given to your client. If you read the numbers in analytics, analyze the ranking reports, let's say it's e-commerce site, optimize ka ng optimize ng, ng website, and there is one specific product na sobrang laki pala ang kita nila pag yun ang binenta, then optimize for that. Kasi yun mas lalaki ang kita nila. Kasi, you know, it's even a good question to ask a client, what is your most profitable product? And what is your best selling product? And what is your least selling product? And we probably focus on those and, and always focus on what makes more money to the client. Okay? Now, na parang mo nga, nagkaroon nga ng traffic. Walang kwenta naman yung website. Pag tinignan mo, ah, hindi ako bibili dito. Design is a good element of that. Landing page optimization, conversion rate optimization. Kung nakakalito, paano inavigate yung site para bumili? Walang bibili. So, Tinaas mo nga yung ranking, tinaas mo nga yung traffic. Kung pagpunta naman sa site, hindi naman bumili yung tao kasi nalito. Hindi niya makita yung buy button or what. At mas attractive yung nasa second result sa Google. Kasi sabay-sabay niya binuksan yung ibang tab. Baka hindi ka mapansin, matalo ka. Mapanalo pa ang, ano mo, ang customer mo. So, sometimes even though you're only doing SEO, it's nice to consider this. Even just some basic tips. Okay? Under the understanding the client business more audience demographics personal analysis seasonality cultural impacts audience demographics uh, nalaman mo yung bumibili pala ng kunyari ang client mo is nagbebenta ng dice o kunyari client mo nagbebenta ng mahjong tapos nalaman mo ang audience demographic niya ay mga matatandang mga rene respeto nating elders 
So, paano natin bebentahan sila? How do we target them? Ano ba ang website na pinupuntahan nila? Hindi natin alam. Maybe baka mayroon tungkol sa 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 ballroom dancing. <laughs> so, why not target those types of websites? Baka may forum on ballroom dancing, we could target that and then uh, we could target those demographics. Persona analysis, what type, there's different type of customers, you want to target them differently. Seasonality, ano yung malakas sa Christmas, ano yung malakas sa New Year, ano malakas sa summer. Cultural impacts, you know, who's your target market, if it's uh, from China, from from Asia, from Europe, from US, it's all optimized differently. The more you understand the business, the more you could optimize it better by knowing what type of person is searching for their products, okay? So, constant communication is important. Uh, project management systems, you know, reply to your emails promptly, proof your, your emails well, uh, be professional, but being personal also helps. Uh, one thing that I've noticed, you know, even in calls, calls with clients, yung kung parang naalala mo yung nangyayari sa buhay nila, you could say something like, hey, what's up, how's the weather, or whatever. May mababanggit sila, and then you could say, you know, what did you do over the weekend, blah, blah, blah. And then when the next meeting comes, you could even follow up on that and say, oh, you said over the weekend you went to Disneyland. So, kamusta pala ang trip mo sa Disneyland? Did the kids have fun? Now, it's more of a personal touch, but when you do have that, um, there's some rapport that's built. There's some type of bond and uh, clients like that, and it's not just all business. But again, be professional, okay? Contact information always on the email signature. Sa dulo ng email mo, sa pangalan mo, andun lagi yung email mo, ang number mo, whatever. You never know when they want to contact you and if they can't find your contact information, sometimes they get frustrated. They just find the first, the last email that you sent them and it's in your signature and they could contact you easily. Uh, phone num, uh, some, there's still lots of people that like using the phone. Ayaw nila mag-email. Uh, and I know lots of people are in the Philippines, there's lots of outsourced work. I suggest just investing, maybe getting a magic jack or just getting, have your Skype number readily available and always on that people, that clients could call you uh, directly while in the US. Uh, magic jack is only like $20 a year and you just plug it in any USB port and may number ka na. Meetings. Uh, there's lots of tools to do meetings where you can share your screen. Actually, you could do it in Skype and you could do it in Google Play. Now, there's other tools also out there. You know, there's WebEx, GoToMeeting, Join.me. For some reason, nasanay lang kami sa GoToMeeting. We're all using GoToMeeting in our company. Okay. When things go wrong, sometimes it is best to tell the client right away before they find out and tell you. So, kunwari, may biglang nangyari. Uh, na delete mo yung buong website. <laughs> Uh, or something, or the website is down, imbis na mataranta ka, inaayos mo, and it takes so long, sometimes it's just easier. Email the client right away, call them up, hey, client, it looks like we have an issue, we're seeing this, I just want to let you know that we're on it and we're fixing it right now. Okay, for this next part, organizational structure. Flat or uh, horizontal or vertical? Flat or hierarchical, okay? Flat is, uh, all of you have are multi-talented, magagaling kayo, that's why kailangan talented skill employees kasi pare-pareho ang rango nyo, pare-pareho kayong expert. And ang, ang nangyayari is uh, you do everything, you're multitasking. You do content, you do mark, you do you do link building, you do on-page, you know the code. And, and whenever you get clients, you're assigned like a number of clients. Let's say you get five and then your coworker gets another five, your coworker gets another five. Usually five is a, is a normal load. It's almost like working on one client per working day and going beyond that, may hirapan ka na. Okay, now in a vertical environment or hierarchical where you have different layers of of expertise, you know, you could have like a, an account manager and then under the account manager, there's like a project manager and in there your project managers, you have SEO strategists and then SEO analysts and then SEO specialists. It all depends. And then you can have like a content writer here, you could have a link builder here, you could have a, a, a SEO developer here. The, the beauty of that is you don't need to have very talented people that know them all. 
In fact, it's very hard to find those. You could have very specialized tasks. Ah, ako, writer lang ako. Yun lang ang alam ko. Yun lang ang gagawin ko. Ah, ako, link builder ako. Yun lang alam ko. Yun lang ang gagawin ko. Okay? So, normally, um, that, that, that's what defines these. You don't need them to be super talented because they're really concentrated in one small area. Now, this is mainly growing your company. And sometimes, some of you out there might be that small task. Maybe some of you are working in a company na ang role nyo is just to build links. Maybe some of you in a company, ang role nyo is to just post blog, guest blogger. Maybe some of you are just allowed to uh, post in forums. Now, that is more of a vertical or hierarchical em environment where you are a specialized member. You're specialized to do one thing. Now, in the horizontal or flat, wala kayong rango-rango. Walang manager, project manager, strategist, analyst, wala. Pare pareho lang kayo. We are all SEO people. And all SEO people, you do everything by yourself. Now, uh, uh, thinking of it really depends. I normally see this in small businesses of like-minded people that are owned by the same people and they all have the same skill sets. Usually, yan nakikita ko. Here is, I see this more in larger companies that want to grow fast and want to do, build stuff. Uh, normally, it's harder to train these people, it's harder to find them, and it's harder to hire them because it's hard to put multi-talented people all in one place. This is easier to start, it's easier to train, it's easier to find people. Sometimes you could even hire people that don't know what to do and you just train them. Kasi specialized naman, you train them on each individual thing and they learn uh, along. If you're gonna compare this, let's say this is a high class restaurant with a chef. And if you want to grow the, grow the restaurant and uh, increase the capacity, then you need more chefs that are like the chef, that could cook like the chef also, and he's an expert. While here, in vertical hierarchical, um, easier to train and find people. Let's say you have a McDonald's fast food, and everyone that's there doesn't know how to cook. They just follow the process. Press the button, put it here, it tutunog siya, tanggalin mo yung fries, baliktad mo, lagay mo sa lalagyan, tapos. And they don't even know how to cook anything. They're just following a process. Okay? Sometimes it's easier for this to grow. Okay? So, each team member works on a small amount of clients doing everything. Kagaya ng sabi ko nina, most probably each team member would only handle a maximum of five clients. Here, each team member works on a large amount of clients, but, on, but doing only one specific task. Say, link builder ka, bete ang kliente mo. Lahat ginatrabaho mong link building. Sa isang araw, you work on four clients. And four clients in five business days, so you finish out 20. And for each one, you do like uh, three forum posts for each client and so on. Okay, so that's the different cases there. Nice thing about this is flexible, customized, and tailor-made. This is talagang customize a client. You understand the client needs and you mold the SEO strategy depending on what the client really needs. Normally, this is the best solution if you're really concentrating on the best um, results that you would get that the client could possibly get. Here, it's cookie cutter, set, and define process. Ready-made name process, may mga steps, sinusundan mo lang. Normally, this is not flexible. And depending on the type of people you hired, not everyone is a strategist here. They don't even know what the strategy is. So, pag, na, pag gusto mong i-customize yung plano, baka hindi pwede. Kasi only the main strategist on top would know and then i-distribute pa niya yung instruction pa paano pa baba. And it's not always that easy to handle the, a, a large amount of people where all of them may not know everything. Okay? Harder to scale, easier to scale. And when we say to scale, to grow, to grow proportionally. So if you want to make more money, uh, in this type of environment, it's harder to find the, mo the, the, the multi-talented people. Uh, it's hard to find them. While here, it's easier to scale because you don't need a, a large amount of talent. You just hire someone, train them, make them small, use a small task. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now, I'm not saying which is better than these two. Walang makakasabi niyo kung sino mas better. It really depends on your current situation. My, my analogy here was a chef that really knows how to cook. 
and he has a team of chefs that really know how to cook, make good food, while here is a McDonald's that don't know how to cook, they just follow the process, and they still make food. Um, normally, the more delicious food is really here, but here is they grow fast. They grow fast, and they're, they can become one of the largest companies in the whole world, uh, McDonald's, <laughs> while well, this one could be a single come a single restaurant that's high class with good reviews that only exists in one town okay makes sense okay moving SE outsourcing so what if you are not really in this type of environment with multiple employees you're just all alone you're receiving jobs that's passed on to you okay so it really depends on what is outsourced to you and bang in outsource ayo outsource strategy or outsource task. But outsource strategy, you are given autonomy on how it should run. And usually goals related to the success of the client are related to these. Parang yung pinaka SEO strategy ang pinasa sa iyo eh. Concern ka sa dapat malaki ang kita, dapat malaki ang sales ang leads, dapat tumaas ang organic search traffic, tumaas ang ranking, incoming search keywords increase of shares, tweets, bookmarks. You are concerned about these because you know that this would help the, the client make more money online because yung strategy nga ang pinasa sa'yo. Okay? But you should not be judged in this manner. Number of links created, number of pages optimized, keyword density of pages, number of blog posts written, hours spent working. Because pag ang strategy in outsource sa'yo, and let's say you achieve increased profits within two weeks. And konti lang ang ginawa mo dito. You achieve the goal. Dapat jan ka judge, hindi ka dito judge. So when you write your proposals and you write your contracts, if once you determine that the whole strategy is being outsourced to you, fix your KPIs. Don't concentrate on these. Don't make this a success factor. Kasi oras na sinulat mo yun sa kontrata, oras na sinulat mo yun sa proposal, hahanapin nila yan. Let's say you said number of pages optimized. I'm going to optimize 10 pages per month. And then after, after a month, pag wala kang na-optimize, asan yung 10 pages ko? Even if super laki ang kita nila. You know, uh, sometimes your contracts and proposals make the client look at factors that are not really important. Uh, in the strategy, what is important is the, is the company is making more money and making them happy. Now, but if ang naga outsource sa yo is only outsourcing a specific task, let's say an SEO company is outsourcing to you, or the company that your client has an SEO manager or employer or what, and then there's only and they do the strategy, ang ina outsource lang yo sa yo is specific task like. Could you guest blog for me? Could you link build for me? Could you write content for me? Um, could you uh, implement on-page optimization for me? Okay, but wala kang pakialam sa strategy. They are the ones that are writing it down. So if that is the case, goals should not be related to the success of the client. Kasi the SEO manager there might, might even be, might, might have a clash of ideas with you on what you think uh, how SEO should be done. Paano kung panayang duplicate content niya, panayang article directories niya, puro spammy pa ang sinasubmit niya, um, mahina pa yung pagkaspin, patamaan lang sila ng panda, sigurado ka na sa utak mo, tatamaan sila ng panda. And then you come and say, ah, that's wrong, don't do that. You're gonna go run into whatever. But if you are outsourced to do a specific task, and you were told to do that task, kahit hindi ka naniniwala sa kanya, just do it. Kasi, dun ka binabayaran eh. You're not, you're not paid to do a strategy. You're paid to just spam. <laughs> if you're paid to spam, then spam even though you don't believe in it. Okay? And there's more to that. Okay, you are just followers of set directions, how employers wants SEO. You should be able to express your thoughts if your beliefs are in conflict. Pwede mo express but you are not paid to fix the SEO process. You are paid to finish a procedural task. So, kung outsource task, just finish the task. Okay? You should not be judged in this manner. 
ranking of site, search traffic, profits, improved rankings, etc. So what you are judged here should not be judged here. Okay? So, tandaan nyo to, tandaan, because I, I common get this in, in SEO forums. Strategy nyo yun, hindi mo strategy. Um, so, he, he, they can't blame you kung pangit ang ranking nila. May inutos lang sa yung malit na bagay. Dapat dun ka lang ginadjudge kung successful ang campaign mo o hindi. Tandaan nyo yun, that's how you negotiate, that's how you talk, that's how you write your proposals, and that's also how you write your contracts. Make it clear kung ano bang pinapagawa sa'yo. Kung strategy, nag-iisip ka in the best interest of the client. Pag outsource task, anong pakialam ko sa success? You are making the strategy. Well, don't blame me if, I make, if, if your ranking is not high. You just told me to do guest blog posts. That's it. Now, at the same time, if they ask you, hey, uh, could you do guest blog posts for me? What's going to happen to my ranking? And then you just say, it really depends. I really don't know. You're paying me to do a guest blog post, and I will show you the guest blog post. I can't promise any ranking at all because I am not doing the strategy. I'm just doing guest blog posts for you. Okay? Make that clear. If you believe something is done that is not ideal for SEO under outsource task, you do not need to question the process or try to improve it. While in the outsource strategy, kung ikaw mismo ang gumagawa ng strategy, if you believe something is done that is not ideal for SEO, it's your responsibility to inform the client and try to improve it. So, kung may belief itong, kung nangyari, strategy pinagawa sa'yo, tapos biglang sinabi ng client, ah, bili tayo sa mga blog networks ng links. It's paid like, like uh, build my rank link banner or something. And then you say, no, hindi. Na marami ng pages dun ng naban. Don't use it. And they don't believe it. It's your responsibility to inform them. And, and you have to make it clear that, yes, sinabihan ko kayo. Okay? And it's better not only verbal. Put it in an email so there's some email history that you could recall na sinabihan mo sila. So if anything goes bad, at least you have it on paper, okay? Deals gone bad. Okay, what are the common bad deals? Iba iba. I say it's over, and they say it's not over. Often cause miscommunication. Again, expectations are not set, and we went through this earlier. Uh, no discussion of goals and KPI factors. No discussion of project end. Okay? False promises made. Okay? Now, we didn't discuss this earlier, but if ever you did make a false promise, prenamis mo eh. Prenamis mo magna number one ng keyword. Hindi lagot ka talaga. Okay? Now, that is a common problem. So, to avoid it, uh, just set up the expectations right. So we already talked about that, but if it already happened, then um, there's really nothing that you can do. It's really just apologizing and say, sorry, we didn't meet it. Now, not satisfied will not pay. And this goes back into, aside from all of these, it's very similar to the outsource test and the outsource strategy. What are they really paying for? What are the success factors they're looking at? Baka may disconnect kayo. Baka outsource task ang binigay sa iyo, ina-expect nila, tataas ang ranking nila. Pero it's just a small task. You're not really given the SEO strategy. So, uh, remember that too. You did not improve my rankings. I did. Ah, naalala ko dito si Armon. <laughs> he was the one that told the story on Skype saying that, that this client, you know, uh, uh, wanted an increase in ranking. And he was required to do some type of link building. And he just did a few. He became number one. Naniningil na ngayon si Armon. Nagre-reklamo yung client. Wala ka naman ginawa. Nisulit ang nababayad ko sa'yo. And aside from that, I think they were also saying that they have other people on their team. Uh, they had other people on their team also doing SEO. So paano natin masasabi kung sinong gumagawa ng SEO? So aside from all of these, not asking in the beginning of the project what the other SEO efforts are being done. So that's important. Whenever you get a new client, 
ask them right away. Uh, are you doing current are you currently doing SEO is there anyone on your team are you also paying another company to do this and when you do ask that you could also ask how could we synergistically work together and how do we make sure that we're not stepping on each other's toes or we're not going to each other's plan and basically it's it's nice to disclose that and figure that out if the client really wants to have a separate team doing SEO task it would be all fine only if you are not held accountable to the KPIs and it's like being paid for outsourced task. So if multiple people kayo sa work, you're not really paid for the success factors um, uh, of ranking or traffic or what. You are paid to finish a task. So uh, if there's multiple companies there, ranking should not be a KPI. Okay? So, malini armon yun. <laughs> Did not spend enough time, not worth the money. Kind of similar. Um, may pinasa sa yung trabaho, uh, konti lang ang ginawa mo, tumas kagad ng ranking, o tumas kagad ng traffic, pero ang paniniwala nila, ano, ang paniniwala nila, oops, paniniwala nila parang hindi sulit ang ginaya nila. Again, it is KPIs. Uh, what are the KPIs? What are the success factors? And uh, how are you measured? You know, I'm not measured by the... Uh, uh, to determine the end of a project, it's not really by the hours spent or the number of words or the number of links. It's really by success and whatever. So again, it all boils down to KPIs. Now, victim of the con man. Lino ko kayo. Okay? Lino ko kayo. Then, pag linoo kayo, all of these don't, don't apply. But all of them is f your responsibility. Uh, oh, this should be fake, not face. Fake company or fake trial, I'll pay you, but I never do. So, it could be a fake company or it could be a fake trial. When we talk about fake trial is, uh, gawa ka lang ng, ano, ng uh, 10 links para sa akin. And if I like what you do, and then I'll pay you to continue. And then yung pala, 50 people ang kinausap niya ng ganun. So, naka 50 times, then naka 500 links pa siya ng libre. Okay? So, that's what I call a fake trial. I'll pay you, but I never do. Yun yung mga tipong, oh, sige, gawin mo na, babayaran kita next week. And then next week comes, wala pa rin. Then another week comes, wala pa rin. The fake company is talagang fake talaga. It's a fake company from the very beginning. Peke siya. Okay? No background check was done, kasalanan nyo. No company research was done, kasalanan nyo, they kind of research. Do not give free work. That is the bottom line, I guess. Unless you are 100% sure that this company will pay you, they're highly reputable, they have a reputation to, to cover, and so on. Okay. The public rebuttal. If the deal has already happened, do you go public? If the bad deal. So, kung may nangyari ng masama, ya announce mo ba sa mundo? Now, what I'm saying here is my personal philosophy. I'm not saying it is the best, but it works for me. If you believe in it doesn't work for you, then don't do it. Okay? But this is just my own advice. I have no study for it. So if a deal goes south or goes bad or what, just drop the project nicely, okay? Don't deal with them again. No matter how wrong the client was, no need to badmouth them publicly. Just avoid them in the future and learn from the experience and be more cautious. So, hindi mo na kailangan magsalita in public, ah, si ganito, lino ko ako, walang kwenta ang kamaling yan, ganun na, hindi mo na kailangan yun. Quiet ka na lang, wag mo na lang pansinin. Because the more you talk bad, sometimes these other companies, they're sweet talkers, they're good talkers. If they talk better than you in public, ikaw pa ang lalabas na masama. Okay? Pag ikaw ang lumabas na masama, mas lalong, wala kang, mas lalong konti ang klienteng gukuha sa'yo. Okay? As long as you identify them, avoid them. And if whatever signs you found out that's similar, if you face them again with another person, you already know the signs. Try to avoid them. Even if you keep quiet, be prepared for a rebuttal if needed. K 
kailan? Pag sila ang nanguna, pag sila ang nangunang magsabi ng masama, pos, kahit quiet ka, pero tinitira ka na online, siguro, yun na yung time na dapat mag ka. So, ang unang advice ko is keep quiet. If they keep quiet too, and just avoid them. But if they don't keep quiet, at sinasabi wala kang kwentang tao, eh dapat lumabas ka na rin. Sabi mo rin, walang kwento sila. So, in preparation for that, always keep contracts, project statuses, and communication notes handy. Kasi, you could always use these, even screenshots, email copies, whatever, kung labanan lang naman sa blog, kahit hindi legal argument, kahit wala sa korte, nagbablog siya ng lahat ng masama mong bagay na sinabi, i-vlog mo din niya yung email niya, may mga screenshot ka pa, ito, sinabi niya, para mapatunayan mo talaga, mali siya. Now, kung ikaw yung mali, eh, mali ka talaga, wala kang magagawa. Kung siya yung mali, at least you have this handy. Okay? Now, another thing, if you have a strong bad feeling about the client, if I have a strong feeling about the client, normally I register the, the name as a domain name and SEO it, but without any bad information, just show the feeling that I am in control. So usually, pag meron kliente na feeling mo magsasalita ito, maraming sasabihing masama ito, parang pinaparamdam na niya. Parang sinasabi niya sa phone, I have many contacts and yeah, I'm not going to talk to them anymore. In fact, I'm going to say that you don't do a good job. Sinabi niya sa phone. Pero pwedeng gawin niya, pwedeng panakot lang. Pero dahil sinabi na niya yun, i-register ko yung pangalan niya or something similar with his name in the domain. May ilalagay ba akong pangit sa website? Actually, wala. Puro maganda, baka puro maganda pang ilagay ko or neutral. Pero... Pero pag nalaman niya yon at alam niya ako ang may-ari ng site, actually, hindi ko rin ipapaalam na ako ang may-ari ng site, pero mararamdaman niya na ako ang may-ari ng site. And it keeps them quiet. Keeps them quiet because they know that I am in control. Okay? 